Today on Precision Rifle Network, how to do a tall target scope tracking test. Alright guys, so as we get started today, I'm going to show you everything you need in order to set up a tall target tracking test for your scope. I'm just going to go ahead and get all the gear laid out on the table for you and explain how to set this all up and then we're going to get out into the range and uh, and I'll show you how to set up a tall target tracking test uh, and fire through it at 100 yards. Alright, so as you can see from all the gear here, you need a big sheet of cardboard, approximately, oh, 40 inches tall. Um, ultimately, it only needs to be about 36 inches tall. So there's roughly um, 36 MOA uh, to get to a thousand yards. Um, so it needs to be roughly that tall. Your your piece of paper or the back of your target or whatever um, you know needs to be able to reach uh, from your 100 yard zero all the way up to your thousand yard uh, impact zone. And so it just needs to, you need to figure out how tall that is for your given uh, distance or scope or, or whatever it is. You know if you want to test out to 1,200 yards or 1,400 yards, of course you're going to need a taller piece of cardboard and piece of paper. I'm going from zero to a thousand yards today so this will suffice for me. Uh, we also need a level. Um, I'll show you what that is for uh, as we get going on here. A tape measure and a pen, something to mark this with. And then what we need to do is we need to find the center uh, of our target as far as um, going across. Now you don't have to find, this is just what I recommend. So I've already done this and marked it uh, at the top and the bottom of our piece of paper here. Um, so I've got two marks and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay my level down across those marks. As precisely as I can, okay? And then I'm gonna take my marker and I'm going to draw my vertical line. All the way up my target. And again, uh, once we get out in the field, I'll show you exactly why that's important. But now we've got our vertical line on our piece of paper. Now we need to know where we're going to place our dots or our aiming points, right? Because in a tall target tracking test, you wanna fire a group at your 100 yard zero. So in this case, that's gonna be at the intersection of this line and the paper and the cardboard down here for me. And then somewhere, uh, roughly 36 inches up towards the top is gonna to be my 1,000 yard uh, target that I'm gonna place there, although you always aim at the 100 yard target, whether you're, you're uh, dialed in for 100 yards or 1,000. It's just the nature of this test. There's a math equation that you need to know, right? So we know that um, you know a mill is 3.6 inches at 100 yards. So the math equation is basically 3.6 times your distance divided by 100 yards where the target is, is placed. So if we look at that, it's 3.6 times 1,000 equals 3,600 divided by 100 equals 36 inches. So if I wanted to measure from my original bottom aiming point down here up to 36 inches and put a mark, that tells me where I'm going to place my 1,000 yard sticker target when I get out to the range. So when I take my shot, I'm gonna be zeroed for 100 yards and then I'm gonna dial the scope for 1,000 yards and the new group should impact somewhere around the target point up here and somewhere dang close to that line uh, given a few other variables that I'll explain out on the range. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and throw my, my target dots on here. So we've got a, a cardboard target, a paper target, and a vertical line that's perfectly straight on the paper. Now one thing you can do as well that I am not going to do today is a lot of people want to know at what point um, their scope deviates on this line as far as their tracking is concerned. Now almost all optics, it's safe to say, are going to track 
uh, inside of 500 yards. I, I haven't seen a scope, even the cheap ones, that don't at least track uh, fairly accurately to 500 yards. And at that distance, even if the tracking is off a little bit, it's not going to push your shot uh, off of target all that much. So if you wanted to, you could do the math. Again, I'm not going to do it, but you could figure out what uh, the distance is. You know, if, if, if your 100 yard zero is, is 3.6, you'd, you know, the next one would be what, 7.2, and the next one would be, and you could just figure out the inches as you go up your, your line here, and you could put targets along there, um, and you could then dial in your scope data uh, for each hundred yard increment all the way out to a thousand and you might be able to figure out at what point So, you know, let's say you've got I'm not even going to mention a, a scope Brand it doesn't really matter But let's say whatever scope you're testing starts to come off of the side of that line uh, At the 600 yard line at your 600 yard target and at seven It's a little more and at eight It's a little more and so on then you know at what distance you really can trust that optic, or not at all, if you're like me and you'll just end up sending it back. But um, the point being, you could do that if you wanted to. The other option here, now that you've got your target completely set up, you could just buy a target like this. Uh, and this is Frank Galley's um, Sniper's Hide Tall Target Tracking um, Target. I'll just be using this. I just wanted to show you guys on the other side how you can go about um, you know setting up your own tall target tracking test but you know you can buy one of these uh, which has already got it figured out for you um, you know from zero out to a thousand and gives you your aiming points and grids so you can tell exactly how far things are uh, are either off or on so again um, you know that's uh, sniper side Frank Galley's tall target tracking Target and it can be found at these guys right here, box to bench precision. All right guys, here's what we got here. So when we get down here, we gotta make sure that we line up the level with one of these vertical lines and make sure that this target is hanging perfect with gravity. And our scope in theory is leveled perfectly as well, which will give us a nice true path for when we uh, dial up our elevation turret. So um, that way we can kind of eliminate some of those variables and we know it's not because the scope is canted or the target is canted that the shots will deviate. It, as close as we possibly can. Obviously there, there, there might be a tiny bit of error. There's a tiny bit of error in most scopes, but we're trying to eliminate that as much as possible. So we're gonna go ahead and get this attached up here. You can watch how I do that and then we'll get back and shoot our first 100 uh, yard group and, and go on from there. So I'm just making sure that this bubble level down here at the bottom is perfectly in the center, at least as much as I can get it. And then we're gonna use these clamps to lock it in. Now our target is as leveled as I can get it with gravity. We're gonna go back and shoot our groups. Again, we're gonna be aiming right down here at our 100 yards. And then when I dial up to 1,000, I'm, using, I'm shooting a 6.5 Creedmoor today. It's in mils. So, you know, it's probably gonna be in the neighborhood of eight mils somewhere in there. So we're gonna end up with a group up here, hopefully right up on that line. Let's go figure it out. All right guys, so we've got our target leveled up down there uh, at 100 yards and I am shooting off the bench. Again, I'm not super concerned about ultimate precision here. I'm not shooting tiny groups right now. I'm gonna shoot a three shot group down at my 100 yards uh, zero and then I'm gonna hold the, the reticle on that exact same aiming point, the 100 yard zero. I'm gonna dial eight mils up to my thousand yard hold for this cartridge and rifle and I'm gonna fire another group and we'll get another group up towards the top somewhere and we'll be able to tell if the scope is tracking well. So let's go ahead and shoot this initial hundred yard group.
All right, there's the initial three shot group. I should also mention that um, I don't have an anti-cant device on the rifle, but the scope is leveled. Therefore, in the, verti the uh, vertical steady in the crosshair, it's leveled, and our target down there is leveled, right? So as long as I keep my crosshair perfectly in line with the vertical line down there, I'll be okay. So now I'm gonna dial my eight mils up, and we're gonna fire our other group. There's eight. Again, holding at the 100 yard aiming point. Let's run down range and we'll evaluate. Uh, I'm just gonna hand hold this and, and we'll get, get the uh, results. So, right down here at the bottom, and if we look at this, that was our 100 yard group. So, pretty much centered up on our vertical line there. A Little bit low, but that's okay. And uh, probably about a half an inch group. Now, as we pan up towards the top, we should find that other group somewhere on the line. There it is. For the most part, centered up on the uh, on the line again I only fired three shots so you know th there's a lot more ways you can be more precise with this test I'm honestly not that concerned about this so I know that this scope tracks true at least for the most part true all the way out to a thousand yards I can't be ultimately certain because I'm not testing it farther and I'm not being super precise but for what we do in competition this is going to be good enough all right guys for what we do in competition hopefully that's good enough uh, it is for me i would trust this scope from zero out to a thousand yards no issues so thanks for watching today guys hopefully you learned something there go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you would please tune in again soon for more great videos from precision rifle network